half here at beautiful Seagram Stadium on a rather overcast and wet day. We have the Waterloo County Secondary School Athletic Association Junior Football Championship game. The Forest Heights Trojans leading 14 to 7 and here's the kickoff by Nick Maxwell to start the second half. Fielded by number 27, Jonathan Bonert. Reverse or a fake reverse. Bonert keeps the ball. It's read, read well by the Forest Heights downfield tacklers. And the tackle is made by number 17, Wes Woodall. Tom, on the uh, replay here, we're going to see Jonathan Bonert catch the ball, fake the handoff to Rishi Prasad, and be tackled well by Wes Woodall. Any comments, Tom, on the, uh, the first half? Um, not surprising in terms of, uh, of the score. We'll watch this play and then I'll comment. Give to the first man and met solidly at the line of scrimmage in there to help out for uh, Forest Heights is number 19. If I get order back here, looks like Sam Kovac. George, the, uh, I think the play was dominated in terms of uh, time on the uh, field by Forest Heights. They scored two short touchdowns by their quarterback and by Gibson, their running back. Gibson. And Louisville uh, came up with a big play, a uh, uh, long gainer by Prasad, going around the right end, unmolested, to uh, stay in the game. The, uh, the Forest Heights line has showed some kind of tenacity and dominance, but uh, this game is anybody's game as far as I see right now. Well, we're just seeing a replay of that uh, second Blueville uh, play here, the handoff to Rishi Prasad, actually throwing for a loss on the play. We now have a Blueville third down, 11 meters to go for a first down, and the ball is on their own 30-yard line. Play action pass, and here goes Trevor Wheeler downfield but the ball is picked off ends up in the hands of number 85 and I believe that is inside linebacker Ed Chappelle superb play and the defense reacted so well to that play action pass down the middle and it was a well thrown ball too George little under thrown but he certainly stroked it okay as a quarterback Mike White got it away uh, so kind of a lucky fluky bounces <laughs> Reminds me of a playoff game in the NFL a few years ago. <laughs> well, I'm surprised your memory's that good, Tom. But we now have a Forest Heights uh, first down on Blue Vales. Well, I don't understand what we have here. It must have been a penalty and so on. Anybody pick up the indication? Regardless, it'll be Forest Heights first down on the Blue Vale 47 and a half yard line. This is the first sequence for the Junior Trojans in the second half. Quarterback Nick Maxwell takes and gives straight to the left. Uh, side of the line again to Paul Gibson, number 39. George, that uh, that interception by Chappelle, uh, he's only a grade nine student. He's played minor football and he also does the long snaps for them. They seem to be sprinkled with some grade nine first year players, which is ominous for the future for Forest Heights. Well, I'm very impressed. Both teams have significant numbers. Forest Heights dressed about 40 kids for this game and Bluevale has well over 50. Real good job of... Uh, of recruiting by those coaches. The handoff goes to number 49, Jamie Piatrasco, the second man over the left side, again following the blocks of the left side guard, Bob Seafried, Frank Halsey, people like that, and uh, Forest Heights just grinding out the uh, yardage over that left side. Flag well behind the play. Seemed to be some frustration there in Forest Heights part on the right side of the line. Holding is the call against the Junior Trojans. That nice run by Jamie Pietrasco will come back. It'll be a second down repeated situation for the Junior Trojans and about 20 meters to go for a first down. Sometimes a questionable call when you get it away from the play, so obviously, but uh, the referees are doing a fine job. Nice recovery, Tom, nice recovery. Play action left. Maxwell looks to throw the ball. Overrun by the defensive uh, tacklers. They were blitzing from the corners and uh, almost didn't make the tackle, going a little high. But re nice recovery. 
one of the quickest ways to uh, to judge a, a uh, junior football team in terms of fundamentals is often how low they get. Inexperienced kids will come in high like this, and as kids get better technique and so on, they will start to go lower and lower with their uh, shoulders close to the ground. Very aggressive defense, firing their corners like that. Third down, Forest Heights. Ball now on their own 50-yard line. We've had a significant uh, change in, in field position here. So it's third down and about 23 meters to go. The uh, center, Kevin Springall, is over the ball. Quarterback Nick Maxwell is deep this time. We're going to be in a shotgun-type situation. The snap is high, and the tackler, <laughs> Skip Weaver, penetrates and makes the hit right away. They sent flanker George Barnard straight down the middle of the field, and uh, uh, he was covered well on the play by number 29 of the uh, Blue Vale safety, um, Greg Mandel. But uh, it was all irrelevant because the, uh, the snap was a little high, and uh, Skip Weaver was in immediately to make the tackle. It, uh, Blue Vale are almost inviting Forest Heights to throw down the middle. They had two DBs split wide. And uh, they go into a shotgun and show obvious pass, and they haven't done it much this year, obviously, because it didn't work very well. Punt situation for Forest Heights. Snap is a good one by Ed Chappelle. The punt comes to the open area of the field, takes a great Forest Heights bounce, is fielded finally by Rishi Persad. Rishi cuts back up the middle, and this could be trouble, folks. Here he goes again, right down the sidelines. There are no flags on the play. Finally caught by number 69, big Bob Seafried. That man is a good football player. He has made the difference this afternoon in terms of keeping Bluebell in the game. Well, Rishi Prasad, as we said earlier, is a great 11 boy, an outstanding athlete, basketball, football, and cricket. And on the replay, we're going to see him field this ball after a long pro Trojan bounce, make one fake, and go right back up the sideline. Hugging the sideline quite nicely. And number 69, he didn't think he'd have to get in the play, but he had to. Well, it'll be first down, Bluevale, ball on the Forest Heights 44-yard line. The defending Wixa champion, Bluevale Junior Knights, trail in this game. The score 14-7 in favor of the Forest Heights Junior Trojans. Oh, man. A pitch out, an option play, and obviously the... <laughs> The Junior Knights haven't worked on that one recently. We didn't see any option stuff in the first half by either team. On the replay, you're going to see the pitch intended for Jonathan Bonert. Rishi Prasad jumped into quarterback here. Oftentimes in the uh, junior quarterback or someone doing the option play like that uh, are so concerned about the person going to hit them that they do not look at the person they're trying to pitch to, and that's crucial. You're going to get hit anyway, so make a good job of it. Well, number 23, Kevin Carter, came in to uh, be the other running back on that play for Blueville. Here's Mike White back in at quarterback. Hand off this side to Rishi Prasad. It's just a slant action over the right tackle. They're trying to run behind tight end Trevor Wheeler and right tackle Nino Arasanen. And they're not having much luck with that, uh, that good defensive line play by the Forest Heights Junior Trojans. Very impressive stand there by Frank Halsley. He's... Uh Number 31, I believe, and he's a second year of football. He's a three year junior, 6'3, 210, and he takes karate. <laughs> yes, sir, Frank. Uh, yes, sir. I hope he tackles low. The uh, timeout on the play, uh, and both uh, teams have huddled. The Forest Heights kids are over at uh, talking to, to their defensive uh, coordinator. I wonder if, uh, Tom, could you highlight for us some of the, the coaching staff on both these teams? I'll let you talk about Blueville in a second, but uh, the Forest Heights uh, people are led by Kevin Adams. He's the head coach now for the past three years, and uh, his first year he didn't uh, reach the playoffs with Forest Heights. Second year they lost in the semis actually to Blueville. That's a bit of a grudge match for him. And this year he's advanced to the championship game. Kevin is a former standout defensive halfback himself in Waterloo. Not too many people realize this, but he's quite a hockey player, too. He's famous at the hockey tournament in Wheatley for teachers. The suspension will be lifted. He'll be able to play next year. <laughs> Third down, Bluevale. Ball at the 45-yard line of the Junior Trojans. Quarterback Mike White gives to the second man, Rishi Persad. Nice run by Persad. But the Forest Heights defense, number 21 and number 31, are there to make the hit. Number 21 is Jeremy Zimmerman, defensive halfback. And number 31 is Frank Halsey. 
I mentioned earlier about John John Alice being the line coach, the season veteran, and Tim McIver is the defensive coordinator that's held opponents to only 19 points this year. He's a second year teacher at Forest Heights and formerly from the elementary panel. Good job, Tim. It's good to see some young blood like Tim not only teaching in the secondary panel, but also uh, contributing to a sport like football. We're now at a fourth down situation and Bluevale's going for it. Here's a reverse action. Huge. The ball is the number 30, it Chris like Scott, and go. this could go if this kid has any speed. He's gonna be caught on the far side, but it is definitely a Bluevale first down. Number 30, as I said, is Chris Scott, who took that uh, reverse handoff from quarterback Mike White. They have been setting this up all day, George. I've been watching them uh, go to their cross buck action with this fake reverse, and they've gone to it so many times that now they didn't honor it. And 30 does have speed, but uh, he is caught from... Who caught him there? Number 11, and... That's the safety, Muhammad. Ash Muhammad. It's first down, Bluevale, on the 17-yard uh, line of the Junior Trojans. Wide flanker out here. Number uh, 38 is Rich, is uh, Colin Newber, pardon me. They've, uh, Bluevale has shuffled a fair number of people in and out of that flanker spot. Chris Scott, we just saw him make the long run. They also started a, a young fellow with a fabulous name named Avery Hunsberger. The uh, other two people in there have been uh, Rich DeGroote and now Colin Newber. I guess Christmas is coming up, George, huh? Well, I'm sure uh, I'll find out if he does something uh, really outstanding, uh, this young Hansberger lad. I'm sure he's related to me somehow, but if he doesn't, I'm not certain he's a member of the family. Nice tackle. Tough to run. Number 17 is Wes Woodall. We've mentioned names, Tom, in that uh, Forest Heights defensive line, uh, like Wes Woodall, Brian Bryan, Frank Halsey, and especially Bob Seafried, of course. Th those are essentially their down four, and, and each one of those kids is really strong, has great size, and they move surprisingly well. They're not big, slow players at all. They're quick. Eye formation, third down, Bluevale. Hand off to the left side to Rishi Prasad. Get an awkward position now, George. What to do? It's going to be fourth and about five, six. And uh, they's, they've proven before they can uh, they can gamble. Well, Mike White immediately went over to Coach uh, Doug Carmichael looking to see if the coach wanted to call the play. As I recall from my coaching days, uh, when you're running against the Forest Heights defense like this one, sometimes that's when you go to deal with a sore ankle of another kid and let the quarterback call his own play. Well, we could see a play action pass here. Fourth and five, Bluevale. Ball on the 12-yard line. An off tackle. Just a straight off tackle play to Rishi Persaud, and it's not going to be enough for a first down. Forest Heights will take over the ball. On the replay, Tom, what do we see? Well, it's a just off tackle right again, and uh, like uh, like the coaches have indicated, the great reaction by the Forest Heights defense closed it down. Number 43, number 48. 43 is John Harlock, one of their linebackers, and 49, uh, or sorry, uh, 49, I think, was also playing some defense, and that's Jamie Pietrasco. Harlock is a third-year uh, junior, and he's the winner of the Trojan Rock Award. That means the toughest player in 92. He's an outstanding tackler, as he shows us right there. Boy, I'll bet you they had a couple of dozen uh, second-place ties for runner-up in the Rock Award. This is a tough ball club. I think it's Bluville... Uh, want to mount anything this afternoon right now they're going to have to hold the Forest Heights here to, uh, because Forest Heights can eat up the time as they uh, showed in the first half well on the first play it was just a dive over the left guard the same first play the Junior Trojans have been using virtually every series to Paul Gibson uh, Nino Arasnan made the tackle that time it'll be second and nine Forest Heights from their own 12 yard line they dare throw it here no they're not going to second off man off tackle Andy Allenson tried to come up and make the hit. Petrasco bounced off of him and was finally put down by Skip Weber and number 29, the safety of the uh, Blue Vale Knights, Greg Mandel. This replay will show, George, that it's a simple off tackle and the hole is huge. Number 29 made that Sorry, tackle. 49 is Skip Weber making the tackle. Sorry, Skip. This will make it third down and about a yard and a half to go for a first down. Forest Heights has the ball on their own 18 and a half yard line. 
Nick Maxwell over the ball. Give to the second man, Jamie Pietrasco, and a fine penetration tackle. Looks like number 73, Jeremy Steffler, was in on it. And also number 62, Nino Arasanen. You've, uh, you often second-guess yourself in situations like this with a yard to, to have a crossbuck action that allows the linebackers to penetrate on a situation like this, but uh, now they're in a tough situation here. It looks to me, Thomas, though, the Blueville uh, defense is firing people on every play. They have eight and nine men coming, and they're just assuming Forest Heights is going to run and run right at them for the most part. Looks like they're going to kick, George. Punt situation. Short kick. Back to field it is number 41 of Blueville. Catches the ball and is immediately tackled on the Forest Heights 44-yard line. Down there was number 77 of Forest Heights, uh, Rob Kovac. Excellent defensive stand by Blueville. Be interested to see what happens. The I'm assuming, by the way, that there must be some Kovac brothers here because we certainly have Sam uh, playing a lot at inside linebacker and on the offense as well. And now we see Rob Kovac uh, coming downfield and making the hit as well. Well, he's a grade nine student, Rob. First down, Blueville. Ball on the Forest Heights 44 yard line. Quarterback Mike White takes the snap. Oh, quarterback Rishi Prasad again. Pitch out left, and this one is broken by Jonathan Bullock, and he He's is going to go, folks. Option play left. They snuck Rishi Prasad in as the quarterback, and this outstanding athlete ran and isolated the outside linebacker. Pitched to Jonathan Bonert, the other running back, and Bonert goes. 44 yards for a Bluevale touchdown. It's interesting, George. The only time Prasad goes in, uh, in here the it is on play. the replay, Tom. As you're talking, that well, it wasn't. He, fake, he still nice, better flip than the last time. And Bonert obviously has some speed. Jonathan Bonert, by the way, Tom caught the winning pass as a tight end in last year's uh, uh, Bluevale victory over Eastwood in the county junior championship game. Almost blocked, but Nino Arasman gets the ball high enough, and the score is now tied at 14-14. I guess this is what champions are made of. They'll have battled back. They have not uh, been discouraged by the touchdown scored at the end of the first half. They have uh, shown some real character here. Um, I'm, I'm very impressed by both these teams, the, the toughness of them. Obviously, the coaches have spent a lot of time on fundamentals as opposed to gimmicks. There, there are not a lot of fancy plays and not a lot of, uh, you know, attempted uh, subterfuge and trickery and so on. It's pretty basic football, and, and uh, blocking and tackling, for the most part, is still going to win or lose it. The uh, two teams are different in the, the way they attack, and uh, we do have a more diversified uh, offense by Bluevale. They've, they've come up with so many different things, but they've all been so executedly executed uh, fundamentally so well. Forest Heights um, has relied uh, especially on the, uh, the running game, and they've been successful at that as well. It's an interesting uh, uh, little byplay here because uh, the Bluevale defense is coached by Dennis Bailey. Uh, Dennis is a, is a fellow who coached at Forest Heights for a long time before uh, transferring schools and coming to Blueville. And I think, uh, you know, Dennis has now done it for two years and had two teams in the championship finals. Uh, I hope he's enjoying himself a lot because he's a fine human being. Well, I see him at the library on Friday nights quite often. Kickoff goes deep to Jeremy Lewis, and he cuts it to this wide side. He could go. Rishi Prasad again is the only man who can finally square up and bring him down. Jeremy Lewis is a young man, as you said, Tom, who's in grade nine, but has uh, some excellent speed. He sure does. On the replay, we're going to see Nino Arasen kick the ball deep. It goes to Jeremy Lewis. And Jeremy heads upfield and then breaks to the outside. Got a, he's got a future in football. <laughs> well, we have an injured player on the sidelines, George. Can't quite catch his number. It was the ball carrier. It looks like uh, number 29 from, from where we're at here that it could be Jeremy Lewis. Um, number 22, uh, uh, Tom, uh, for 
came uh, came close that time to making the tackle. That's David Adair, who's a starting uh, defensive back for the Blue Vale Knights. Um, we haven't mentioned him very much this uh, during the game, and that's uh, my impression is that he's pretty solid. He just does a good, quiet job and, and uh, doesn't do anything wrong, and therefore sort of is always in the right place and doesn't get mentioned very much. It is Jeremy Lewis who heads off the field here. It'll be uh, first down Forest Heights on their own 34-yard line. We have two minutes and 27 seconds left in the uh, third quarter of play, this 1993 Waterloo County Junior Football Championship game from Seagram Stadium on a dull overcast afternoon. Nick Maxwell pitches deep to the new man who just replaced the injured Jeremy Lewis. It's number four for uh, the Forest Heights Junior Trojans, and that is Ishak Sashu. Good observation. On replay, Tom. Okay, here we go. I uh, can't see it, but it looked like he had, uh, didn't get control of the ball and slowed down the uh, the whole sweep action. Good pursuit by the uh, Blue Vale linebacking crew. It'll make it second down with a loss in that play of about three. Second down and 13, Forest Heights. Um, Ishak Sashu stays in the game, I believe, as the tailback in their three-man eye formation. Second man give off the right tackle, a little counter action. And that, uh, unless they've changed positions on us, would be number 49, Jamie Pietrasco. George, I see a definite uh, swing in momentum right now. Bluevale have come up, fired out, and are doing the job. And, and uh, there seems to be, I don't know what's happening to Forest Heights, but I think they'd better get at it. Well, I also noticed, Tom, that uh, Rishi Prasad and Jonathan Bonert are uh, snuck into the game occasionally by uh, Coach Doug Carmichael to play some defense as well as offense. Here's a pass action look. Persaud back in the coverage area. And boy, they broke a man, George Barnard, the flanker, right back over the middle, and he almost uh, was in position to catch a long gainer. Yeah, uh, that has potential for the future, I think, but uh, the Blue Vale defense penetrated and forced him to throw that early. Tom, in the early years of my own coaching career, I had an excellent uh, flanker uh, by the name of George Barnard, who played at this very same school at Forest Heights Collegiate. Suffered a very, very unfortunate uh, knee injury that uh, still bothers him to this day. But uh, that young man with the same name certainly runs like him. Snap over the head of the punter. It's Wes Woodall who's back there, and Blue Vale looks like they've just gotten a gigantic break in this game. He uh, snapped him well over the head. That looks like... Uh I don't know who snapped that ball, but I think it's one of the grade nine kids that comes in for the long snap. This makes a big difference if uh, Blue Bell can capitalize on this situation. We have a replay here. Well, Ed Chappelle has been the snapper um, for uh, Forest Heights. We can't see Wes Woodall as the punter, and the snap simply just goes way over his head. Uh, the other snaps have been absolutely perfect, so... Uh, don't know what happened there. Blue Vale takes over the ball on the Forest Heights six-yard line. The minute flag is up to the end of the third quarter. The uh, score, 14-14 to 14 in this Sparta County Championship Junior Football game for 1993. Mike White is the quarterback over the ball. Action right. Handoff goes to Rishi Prasad, who breaks it to the outside again. And it uh, looks like they're going to be stopped right on the uh, line of scrimmage on the six-yard line for no gain. George last week playing Grand River. Forest Heights fumbled the ball three or four times in the third quarter within the 20-yard line. Well, on the replay here, Tom, we're going to see the action right. They uh, attempt to pull their left guard. It doesn't work, and Prasad is really stacked up. Number 49, Jamie Pietrasco, is now in on defense all the time. The, uh, as, as teams start the game, Tom, they, they tend to have one or two boys uh, playing both ways. And as the game wears on and it gets more down to crucial situations, we frequently see more and more boys going both ways for both teams. Fatigue factor comes into play, but uh, we'll have to see what happens. As I was saying earlier, George, uh, Forest Heights uh, were, had their backs against the wall last week against uh, Grand River Collegiate, having fumbled the ball three or four times in the third quarter and literally were on the, their own 20-yard line the whole third quarter and through that series gave up one point. So they have character, and we'll see if this can uh, show itself right now. Well, Tom, we've just changed ends here now for the fourth and probably the final quarter of this 1993 Junior Football Championship game for the Waterloo County Secondary School Athletic Association. 
Should mention that the other coach, by the way, for the uh, Blueville uh, Junior Knights is again back from last year. He's a young teacher named Jeff Smith who coached minor football in Etobicoke for many years and uh, since getting into teaching and coming to the Kitchener-Waterloo area has gotten involved in the program at Blueville. Give to the second man, Persaud, and Persaud is over for the touchdown. It was a second and sixth situation, Tom. They simply ran an, an off tackle right, and Rishi Prasad finds the end zone for Blueville. Well, they challenged. They said, uh, we know you're good up the middle, but uh, we will challenge you, and they, uh, I think they won that challenge. Interesting swing of events. Prasad barely makes it over the goal line. Whenever you run that way, you've got to look at who you're running behind because good teams will run behind their best blockers in a situation like that. And for Blueville, it certainly looked like they were running behind Kyle Fournier and Trevor Wheeler, if I'm not mistaken. Blocked punt. The convert is not good. It is blocked by great penetration. At 55, Brian Bryan looked to uh, be a part of that block for the Junior Trojans. And all of a sudden, now that becomes a pretty big point, Tom. If we can see the replay on this, I don't know if we can. Uh, I think it's Prasad that's standing next to the kicker, and I don't think he picks up anybody that's firing through. I guess he felt that uh, his job was done when he got the touchdown. He could be tired. Well... We're now in the fourth quarter, folks. 11 minutes, 45 seconds remaining in this championship game. Blueville will be kicking off from their own 45-yard line. The score, Blueville Collegiate Junior Football Knights, 20. The Forest Heights Junior Trojans, 14. Blueville is the defending champion. They uh, had defeated uh, Eastwood last year in an exciting uh, uh, county championship game in the snow. Today, there is no snow. The temperatures are much warmer but it is hardly a perfect weather day as we have a reasonable wind uh, that has died down now, but it was favoring the end of the field where Blueville will be kicking from, and there is certainly is moisture on the field and moisture in the air. We've had uh, a little bit of drizzle all afternoon. Four tights are in a difficult position now, being down a touchdown and also facing this wind in the fourth quarter. They don't throw a lot, but uh, they might have to a little bit to get into this again. Number 73, uh, Jeremy Steffler, is the safety on this uh, kickoff team for Blueville. And that's an interesting story because he's a big defensive tackle, and I usually have a much faster, a smaller player back there as a safety. Uh, Ishak Sashu picks up the ball, and a good downfield tackle is made. Looks like number 44. We'll pick it up here. A little communication difficulty between the two people. And, uh, we're looking at a replay here, George. 49, not 44, is Skip Weber, the inside linebacker of the Junior Knights. Good penetration. Tom, we're now going to face a situation where it'll be Forest Tights starting out on their own 27-yard line, trailing in the game by six points as we're in the fourth quarter. They need to put together one of their typical long, grinding drives. Nick Maxwell pitch right. Jeremy Lewis fumbles the ball, falls on it. There will be a huge loss on the play, but at least Jeremy Lewis did get it back. Forest Heights seem to be in a self-destruct mode right now. The, the touchdown was set up by a miscue between the center and the uh, punter, and uh, now we have a sweep that went awry, awry with a, uh, a fumble. Well, on the replay, Tom, we can see the pitch. And it just isn't fielded cleanly by Jeremy Lewis this time. It hit him. Nick Maxwell put the ball where it should go, and it just didn't, uh, his hands didn't hang on to it. A little bit of a jitters by the grade 9 student. Second down, 20 meters to go. Ball on the 18-yard line for Forest Heights. Straight handoff, left side, Jamie Pietrasco. They came back to something that's a little more safe. And uh, they got a few yards, but they're still in big difficulty here, George, being uh, third down now. The uh, fatigue factor, Tom, has to be setting in. Uh, you know, Rishi Prasad and Jonathan Bonert have been carrying the ball incessantly for, uh, for Blueville. They're now playing defense as well. Paul Gibson, Jamie Pietrasco for uh, Forest Heights. Shotgun formation again. Snap to Nick Maxwell, delayed handoff on the deep formation, and Blueville not fooled in the slightest. They tried that earlier, George. It was unsuccessful then, and it's unsuccessful now. 
fourth. They seem to be struggling a little bit. We're now in a fourth down situation here, and Forest Heights has a long way to go. A little sort of a halfback draw there from a shotgun. Trevor Wheeler, the uh, defensive tackler for the Blue Vale Knights. Trevor's a grade 11 kid who was a big, awkward uh, fellow the first couple of years and is just now finding his coordination. He's going to be a fine athlete. Oh, a trouble with High the snap, snap again. again. High snap. Goes this into the end zone. Forest Heights punter Wes Woodall runs with the ball. Gets out. Incredible. Could be trouble. Oh, and a great open field tackle. Wow. That's Who's the Blue Vale kid? Looks like number 73 that made the tackle. He stays sure. down. Is that the man? Bell is wrong, and it looks to me like Nino Arasanen meeting Wes Woodall in the open field. What a stick for junior football. That's outstanding. Replay Tom shows us the snap over the head of the punter Wes Woodall. At 85, Ed Chappelle starting to lift his head too soon. Woodall goes downfield. Please let us see this hit. Oof. Good job, Nino Arasman. Good job, Wes Woodall. That's that doesn't, excellent. Doesn't come any better than that. First down, Blueville. The ball is on the Forest Heights 24-yard line. <laughs> Straight handoff goes to Rishi Prasad. And he's met solidly. Brian Bryan, uh, number 31, Frank Halsey, number 83, and I've been avoiding your name, Jason, because I just can't pronounce the last name. You want to try uh, Bauer and Huber? Hope it's close, Jason. You're playing well. It'll be second down, Blue Vale, 11 meters to go, ball on the 25. Here we go with a reverse action. Chris Scott again. Breaks a couple of tackles. Can he turn on the speed? And back to the well again. And uh, Forest Heights had a great opportunity to drop him for a loss, but uh, tackling high once again. We talked about it in junior football and in senior football. It's something we have to teach. Well, on the replay, Tom, we're going to see the, the handoff go to Chris Scott. And the, the missed tackles, surprisingly enough, um, were by John Harlock, uh, who just in the early part of the game made several outstanding open field tackles. So I guess he's allowed to miss one once in a while. Well, I think the uh, Trojan Rock Award uh, is, is, is valid. However, maybe fatigue's coming into play here. Well, we're now facing a third down situation. Pass action. White throws the ball. And Trevor Wheeler goes up in a crowd for it, but can't pull it down. Forest Heights had all three of their defensive backs there right around the ball. Jer Jeremy Zimmerman, Ash Mohammed. And number uh, 32, pardon me, uh, number 37, Mike Good. It's fourth down now, George. And uh, we're not too sure whether we'll see a kick or not. Well, if you're a uh, Blue Vale situation, Tom, what do you do? You've got Nino Arasman, who's their place kicker. And he is coming on the field. Uh, I think they go for uh, whatever they can get in this one here. But they shouldn't gamble for a first down, that's for sure. They could at least get one point out of this and uh, make the difference seven. Well, the ball sits on the 20-yard line, and uh, Nino Arasnan is certainly lining up a field goal situation. The snap is good. The hold in the place is good. Nino hits it, and it is good. That is a huge play. The ball was kicked from uh, approximately the 28-yard line, 28 to 30-yard line, and Nino Arasnan, the inside linebacker, puts it through, and that gives Bluebell a 23-14 lead. That nine-point difference is going to be tough to overcome at this stage in the game, but if anyone can do it, the even though Forest Heights Collegiate uh, Trojans can. We'll have to see what happens. Tom, we might... Uh, this is often the point in the game where, where you see uh, different types of things start to happen. If you see key, teams uh, gamble, for example, they can either have tremendous success with uh, trick plays or big plays, or... They can uh, have those plays backfire and leave huge gaps in their uh, their offense and defense and so on. So true. Forest Heights have, uh, have been shaken emotionally a little bit by some key miscues that have uh, probably affected their confidence right now. 
Well, we're here with six minutes and 40 seconds to go at Seagram Stadium. It's the 1993 Junior Football Championship uh, game for the Waterloo County Secondary School Athletic Association. The defending champion, Bluevale Knights, with the maroon tops, have taken a 23-14 lead over the challenging Forest Heights Junior Trojans. Bluevale's Nino Arasnan will kick the ball off here from his own 45. Ball is fielded on the 17 by Ishak Sashu. Goes right back up the middle. He handled the authority that time. That's a good, tough return by Ishak Sashu. Uh, fielded on his own 17, got it out to the 46-yard line where Trevor Wheeler made a fine open field tackle for the Bluevale Junior Knights. Got the ball in the air. Good block by number 49. That's Jamie Pietrasco, and there comes Trevor Wheeler. Good night, Ishak. I think we've seen a lot of Trevor Wheeler this afternoon, as much as Forest Heights want to. Triple I formation, handoff, faked left. Quarterback keeps it, and he's oh, caught. Oh, Nino Arasman causes the fumble, and it appears as though Forest Heights has recovered it. Strange uh, developing play, George, and he seems to just throw it up for grabs. Well, on the replay, Tom, we're going to see there's David Adair heading off, but quarterback Nick Maxwell keeps it. Nino's got him, pops out on the tackle. He didn't throw it. It looked like it was just a fumble. David Adair came very close to recovering that uh, ball for the Bluevale Junior Knights. We haven't seen that action before, Tom, where Maxwell fakes the handoff and continues with the ball in his own possession around the end. Well, that goes back to what you said earlier, George, and pulling out something different to get back in the game, and uh, there's a risk. And it's, uh, somehow uh, it's not working for Forest Heights. It looks like reverse, reverse action, action coming here. Good block. Good block. Oh. Out of the clip, Ryan Bryan getting called. Too bad. There's a, play, a flag on the play. And here comes uh, a long gainer of about 20 to 22 meters. With the erased. 25, George Barnard was the flanker who, uh, who took the reverse handoff. And that young man has some speed. He's a great, great 10 student. Also uh, track and field. On the replay, Tom, we can see all the action going left. And there's Nick Maxwell giving to George Barnard. Nice cut inside that block. Manages to miss the tackle of number 41, Wes Farrar, before he's brought down by a host of defensive players. Is that called blocking from the rear? It was definitely called blocking from the rear, and the ball is coming back. It's a, a huge situation here for Forsythe to overcome this kind of a downer this late in the game, being down by nine points. It's interesting in that that uh, call is, is being, the ball is being marked off from the point of scrimmage, not from where the offense occurred, which would have added another uh, six or eight yards onto the penalty. We're now in a second down and 29 situation. Some kind of a screen may be called here. Looking at a drop back pass action. Nick Maxwell screen back to this side. It's picked up uh, eagerly by number 91. Kevin Springall. The problem is that Kevin is the offensive center for the Junior Trojans, and obviously you can't throw a forward pass to your offensive line. Although they'd like to see it happen sometimes, the linemen always want the ball, but uh, Jeremy Lewis showing some frustration there, saying, hey, I was open. Well, I'm told there have even been plays where linemen have gotten the ball, but I don't recall uh, really seeing one of those. Mm -hmm. The uh, Junior Trojans come out over the ball here, third down. We're at 29 yards to go. Nick Maxwell looks to pass. Here comes the rush. Goes deep. First time. Intercepted by number 39, Rishi Persaud. Yeah, Rishi Persaud has played one amazing football game offensively and defensively and also going into the quarterback spot for the pitch outs that made the difference this afternoon. Well, number 90, Steve Wood, was the intended receiver. Nick but Maxwell proves he can throw deep, huh? He's a good athlete. Sorry, George Barnard is down there, too. Situation, situation where I think uh, it was anticipation of the long bomb. They had nothing else to do but that. Screen didn't work, so they went for the, for the long one, and it did not pay off. I guess it's as good as a punt. Well, the ball is close to midfield. It's on the Forest Heights 53-yard line. There are four minutes and 25 seconds left as the Bluevale Junior Knights take over the ball, and it's a straight handoff to the second man, Rishi Persaud, who is stopped cold immediately. Footing seems to be getting a little slippery out there right now. 
boy, the uh, the uh, Junior Trojan defensive line is just overwhelming in their size. I'm really impressed that these Bluevale kids are hanging in, Tom, as well as they are, despite being much smaller man for man across this uh, line of scrimmage. If you can look at where they've uh, gained their yardage, with the exception of the touchdown that went for about eight yards, most of the long gainers have been outside of the tackle. So Carmichael obviously has a strategy to uh, take away the strength of the defense defensive uh, stalwarts by going outside and they set it up nicely with reverses and uh, different kinds of plays. Well, I wish I could tell you who the injured player is, uh, folks. We'll try to get his number for you. If it's number 23, it's their uh, backup running back, Kevin Carter. Kevin would like to stay in the game here, but of course you can't do that after you've been down, so he'll have to go out for one play. The coaches are pretty high on young Kevin Carter, too. They... Uh, I think they've really got two gems in Rishi Prasad and Joan, Jonathan Bonert as running backs. But this young fella backs them up, and he's a good one. White takes the ball, gives to the second man. Rishi Prasad dances through the hole. Looks like we're going to be third down here and about 11 meters to go, depending on the spot. Bluebell are content right now to uh, to run the ball, eat up the clock a little bit here, nothing fancy. But they're in a third down situation. Let's see if they will throw the ball or not or just go with a uh, off-tackle play or a sweep. Well, Mike White is over the ball again, takes the uh, snap from Andrew Schwartz, pitches it this way, and there's a fumble, and it's picked up on the move by Wes Woodall. flags on the play, George. We have a Forest Heights touchdown. And if there's some justice, it's in the fact that Wes Woodall is the guy who gets it. He's had a couple of uh, bad snaps go over his head in uh, punt situations. On the replay, we're going to see how this ball ends up in the hands of Wes Woodall. Looking at uh, pitch left. Reverse pivot, probably. And it went way over his head. The adrenaline was pumping there, George. <laughs> Well, it's an interesting situation, Tom, because we now have a 23-20 score, Blue Veil in the lead. We have three minutes and 21 seconds to go. We're in a convert situation, so I guess the obvious question is, one point attempt or two? Looks like they're going for one unless they're going to fake the punt. Well, fake the uh, convert. The ball is down. The kick is wide left. Wes Woodall, that's going to be the play of his junior career, second year of football in grade 10. Um, Nicely done. Tom, the, uh, you know, just while we have a break in the action here, and this is uh, shaping up for a great finish again, I'm thinking of last year when uh, we had a similar situation with three excellent uh, Eastwood running backs in that uh, full house backfield, much like Forest Heights has been using all day, three backs uh, in tight, and uh, Blue Vale staying with their, their two-back systems. Uh, last year, it was Alan Ruby who uh, who really was the dominant player in the uh, championship game for the Blue Vale Junior Knights. And this year, so far, it has been Rishi Prasad. The, uh, the uh, Forest Heights running backs, uh, Jeremy Lewis has had the bulk of the wide stuff. Uh, Paul Gibson has had the, the dive plays, the uh, plays right between the guards. And the off-tackle man seems, seems to be Jamie Pietrasco. Really talented players out here in this junior football setting. I would agree, George, and this is coming up to uh, an exciting end now. Forest Heights have had some awful bad luck in the second half with uh, some turnovers and got the break that they needed to get back into the game. We've got three minutes and 21 seconds left, and the difference in the score is three for the defending champions, Louisville Knights. Well, we have Persaud and Bonert as the two deep men again for the uh, Blue Vale Knights, although they're not nearly as deep as they had been. Obviously, uh, Coach Doug Carmichael has, has uh, told his, uh, his kick return team to watch for short kicks, watch for the uh, little chip shot. And falling on the ball after it was touched by one of his players is number 30, Chris Scott. Good decision by the referee to blow the ball dead, barring injuries. This is a, a big situation for Blue Vale to sustain some kind of drive because, as we have seen earlier, four sides can eat up the clock, and uh, we could have an interesting end of the game. 
We have a conversation going on right now between the uh, official and the Forest Heights captains. Have no idea what it is or why it is. Tom, I should mention at this point that uh, nobody gets rich in this uh, uh, high school sports situation. We, uh, those of us who are biased about the whole thing, think it's the best bang for the buck around for uh, young kids. We, uh, well, we had an offside declined on the play, and Blueville will uh, take over the ball first down on their own 38-yard line. We have coaches uh, that are all teachers in the system who volunteer their time. It's not part of their job description in any way. Even people who do get paid, such as the referees, are doing it because of a love of the game. They do not do it to get rich. They make a few dollars, which covers their travel expenses and so on, and maybe taking the wife out to a movie uh, on the weekend because of their officiating. They do it because of a love of the game. And boy, for my money, that's where the, uh, that's where the emphasis should be, is people in the game because they like it. First down, Blueville, 37 yard line, wide action right. Rishi Prasad takes the handoff one more time. Impressive run, George. He looked like he got about uh, four or five yards. It'll be a second down situation for Blueville on their own 41 yard line. On the replay, Tom, what do we see? Simple off tackle play, nice block. Big tackle by number 21, Zimmerman. We haven't said much about Zimmerman, but he's been a stalwart out there himself. Second year of football. As we said, he's uh, also a drummer. <laughs> Good combination. I like cricket and football. Here goes Persaud again. Man, this, this young fellow, Tom, has just been the workhorse. <laughs> There's nothing subtle about it. It's our best player right now is Rishi Persaud, and he's going to keep getting the ball. You guys stop him. And they're running continually to their right. They must have an awful lot of um, respect for their right side of the line. On that right side uh, for Bluevale is Kyle Fournier at tackle and Trevor Wheeler at end, as well as Denny Drumsikis at guard. We're in a third and three situation here for Bluevale at the 46-yard line. Just barely is able to get the handoff to Rishi Persaud. The penetration there by big uh, Bob Seafried. Mike White had uh, Seafried on his back as he was handing the ball off. Seafried is uh, wanting to make a difference right now in his, his uh, third year junior football. And We're coming uh, up to a fourth down situation here, Tom. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the clock is running. We have two minutes and 30 seconds left. The ball is on the 46 yard line of the Bluebell Knights, and it would appear to be a fourth down and about a yard and a half to go. We'll have to see what's going to happen. This whether... looks like they're going to gamble, George. Could be, <laughs> could be time for a timeout here. I think you've uh, anticipated so. it well. Because I would think so. It's fourth down and one. And uh, quarterback Mike White is going over to talk to his offensive coach, Mr. Doug Carmichael. If they uh, get the first down here with two minutes left, they got uh, to continue the series, eat up the clock. If they lose, they could lose the game. Well, what uh, what has happened here is that they've, instead of just handing off the, uh, or coming over for instructions, rather, quarterback uh, Mike White has stayed on the sidelines. Kevin Carter's come in as a running back, and that usually means that the main man, Rishi Prasad, is going to be at the quarterback spot as the uh, Knights break the huddle. Prasad has done one thing this afternoon in the quarterback spot, and that's been the option. And, and he's usually run at option left. Mm -hmm. He's worked once and uh, for a touchdown. We have some confusion and another timeout. <laughs> Good choice, kids. When in doubt, uh, he's, oh. he's just going to run it himself. And it looks like he's going to get tackled, and it looks like the, the major risk that they took in the first half didn't pay off, and this is going to be an interesting development. Well, we're at four. It was a fourth down play for the Blue Vale Knights. They gambled again on a fourth down play, lost it again. It'll now be first down Trojans on the Blue Vale 44 yard line with just under two minutes to play in the ball game. George, it looked like there was a lot of confusion back there. It looked like there was a timeout call, but then they snapped the ball. I don't know if that was planned confusion or was that uh, just confusion? Well, I think there's also some confusion because I see Blue Vale with one short defensively. Hand off left. Good tackle by number 62, the inside linebacker, Nino Arasanen. What if they go in their whole, hurry up offense once again without uh, without a huddle? It looks like that's what they're going to do. Well, Rishi Prasad was the man who uh, left the field unnecessarily. He's back in now. 
Wide right, triple uh, I formation, action right, and a pitch to the side is fumbled by Jeremy Lewis. That's the, uh, we've seen this before. He's got the ball tossed behind him. And On the replay, a... Tom, we're going to get a chance to see. Nick Maxwell just pitches it to the tailback. Pitches behind him, and he has to eventually fall on it. It's uh, interesting. I thought uh, th throughout the game, Nick Maxwell has been doing a reverse pivot on that, and that time he did not. Maybe he was just trying to get under control, and it didn't work for him. We have another timeout situation, Tom, as the uh, coaches tend to uh, try and squeeze all the last bit of juice out of both these clubs here as we have a minute and 30 seconds to go. Fourth quarter, the 1993 Junior Football Championship game in the Waterloo County Secondary School Athletic Association. The current score, the defending champion, Bluevale Junior Knights, 23. The challenging Forest Heights Junior Trojans, 20. Are in a third down situation for Forest Heights. Ball right at the center field mark. And they have a 23 meters to go for a first down. They have got two plays to get a lot of yards. And I do not think they'll see a punt any time. Shotgun formation for Nick Maxwell, the quarterback. Drops back even further. Here it is. Slipped out of his hands, and they're going to call it an incompleted pass. I'm not sure if that was a, a screen right or not. But, uh, to see what's happening there. They fired Newdale, fired. They're very aggressive with their corners. The... Uh, uh, Blue Vale Knights have been firing people all afternoon. Well, we had a uh, an official, uh, a sideline official move the yard six, but I think the referees have caught it. It's now a fourth down situation. The Forest Heights Trojans have double flanker right. Drop back formation. Here's the pass. All right. Intended for number 25, their quick flanker, George Barnard incomplete and it would appear that with a minute and 22 seconds to go the Blue Vale Junior Knights are going to take over the ball. Blue Vale are celebrating right now but there's uh, one, and, one minute and 22 seconds left a lot of football to remain. On the replay Tom we see uh, Nick Maxwell going deep over the middle intending it for 25 George Barnard. Coverage is pretty decent we had three uh, defensive players in the area Ball fell incomplete. Blue Vale takes over. Clock will start to run only on the snap of the ball. It's not moving now. Could be a delay of game here by the time Blue Vale runs from the huddle way up to where the ball is being located. Nick Maxwell uh, tried his best through that series. And he's back for another year next year as a three-year junior in the quarterback spot. We have Aaron Schwartz, the Blue Vale center, over the ball. Mike White going to take the snap. And you know Forrest Heights is going to come at him. And off his wide right, when in doubt, put it in the hands of the guy who had it all day and hasn't fumbled, Rishi Persad. You want to play uh, safe football right now, I would think. And uh, four tights are hoping for a turnover, so they'll be trying to strip the ball. Minute and 18 seconds to go. Second down and 10 and a half meters to go for Blue Vale Junior Knights. The ball right around the center field mark. We're in the fourth quarter of this 1993 Junior Football Championship game. The Blue Vale Knights, the defending champions, still leading 23-20 to 20 over the challengers, the Forest Heights Junior Trojans. Looks as though we've had another timeout call by one of the teams, Tom, to stop the clock. The Trojans obviously hoping to get the ball back and have one last shot at uh, a drive for the winning points. A, they've been in a tough situation, George, where they've been down and had to throw the ball, but they haven't thrown the ball all year and uh, have been unsuccessful at this point. Aaron Schwartz over the ball again. Mike White ready to take the snap. Action right. Give to number 39, Rishi Persad. Bounces outside. What a run. That was an uh, incredible display of talent there as he rolled off that tackle. A little spin. And uh, it'll be close to the first down. Well, the ball is placed on the Trojan 46 or 47 yard line. On the replay here, we're going to see Persad get hit and hit well, bounce and roll, get outside and get tracked down by, looks like Wes Woodall. It's a third and two situation, Blueville. Ball on the 47. White takes the snap, gives to Persad. 
I don't think he made it, George. Nice tackle again by number 83, the guy I keep uh, trying not to have to say his name. Mr. Uh, 83 is Jason Bernbauer. Bern Huber. Huber. Difficult name, but he plays that outside linebacker spot awfully well, Tom. Seemed to have an injury down there, George, and I don't see his number. Well, it's the Blue Vale coaching staff is on the field, uh, so it's obviously a Blue Vale player. Here on the replay, Tom, we're going to see Prasad again going right. 49, Jamie Pietrasco also in on the tackle. Interesting situation here, George. It's fourth down and one, and uh, Blue Vale have shown us before they are not afraid to go for it and have uh, on two occasions lost that gamble on significant occasions in the ball game. 39 is uh, possibly the injured player and that would be Rishi Prasad if that's the case and what a loss that would be. Of course with uh, the amount of action that Rishi's had this afternoon this could be a, a winded situation Tom. Uh, he has been uh, just incredible this afternoon. Very impressive uh, display of talent offensively and defensively and offensively from two spots as a running back and sometimes as a quarterback. Well, we're at a fourth down and one situation. Blueville uh, has the ball on the uh, Trojan 45 and a half yard line. The minute flag just went up to the end of the end of the fourth quarter. There's no kick going on here, George. Mike White comes up over the ball. There's more flags all over the place, and Jonathan Bonert with a tough run. Looks like he would have the first down. Flags all over the place, George. Something happened there, and uh, we'll have to wait to see what happens. They are talking to the Forest Heights captain. Now they want to talk to the Blue Vale captain. Isn't this interesting? Rather a key moment in the ball game. Tom with uh, 45 seconds showing on the clock. Blue Vale still ahead by three points, 23 to 20. Fourth quarter, 1993 championship football game. We would look at a, the first half where perhaps we could say that uh, Forest Heights dominated in terms of the time. And uh, with a big play, Blue Vale hung in there. The second half, it's been all Blue Vale. Well, the, uh, I don't understand this. I, I, he, the referee indicated, I think, offside against Blueville. That's right. They said the penalty was declined, and now they're going to measure for the first down. Well, it doesn't make any sense to, uh, well, obviously the penalty had to be against Forest Heights if Blueville declined it, but the... Do they, uh, do they decline it, George, after they find out if it's first down or not? Well, it's, it looks like a first down either way. But uh, that's a strange one, Tom. I'm glad we don't have to understand the intricacies of that and have the game right on that outcome. Yeah. Big first down for for Blueville, and uh, barring some kind of major turnover, doesn't augur well for Forest Heights Trojans, who've had a superb year at eight and Well, they've had a superb year in many ways at that school, Tom. They've had both their uh, junior boys and senior boys win the volleyball championship of the county this year. They have their senior team coming up in the game right after this one for the county football championship. So they have four teams in county finals, and two have already won county championships. Excellent year. Well, Looked like the obviously legal. motion that was a problem there. Left side of the line. Number 55 for Blueville, uh, Kyle Fournier, seemed to uh, jump up prematurely. They're talking to the Forest Heights captains. 39 seconds showing on the scoreboard. Legal motion against Blue Vale. You can see here the uh, the philosophy is for the quarterback to not fumble the ball. Don't hand it to anybody anymore. Just take it and fall on it. Twenty-five seconds. The clock is running. Blue Vale has second down and eleven on the Forest Heights 45. Mike White goes to his knees. It's always wise for a quarterback to tell the uh, official that he's going to do that to get a quick whistle. So many injuries can occur from a hit in the back. Um, as I look at the uh, thousands of fans out here today, we have obviously a cool wind out there that is affecting people. They're huddled under blankets and they're huddled with 
coats up around the ears and so on. I imagine this is a tough setting for many boys out in that field to have the wind knifing through them. Looks like it might be the final play. The minute flag is still up. Four seconds showing on the clock. Third down and 15, Blueville. Mike White takes it, runs, puts his knee down. And the referee is waving his flag as though that would end the game right there. It's definitely very frustrating for the Forest Heights uh, seniors to have, or juniors to have had the many miscues they did in the second half. And uh, they played so well in the first half. But congratulations to both teams for a superb effort and uh, both sets of coaches for the job they did through adverse weather conditions this fall. Well, the referee finally does signal the end of the game officially. There was a little bit of confusion there, but the final score in this 1993 Junior Football Championship game of the Waterloo County Secondary School Athletic Association, the Bluevale Junior Knights 23, the Forest Heights Junior Trojans 20. We have a back-to-back -back Junior Football Champion from 93.